Nabra Talk is brought to you by Nabra Productions. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes at Nabra Talk for all of our latest news, updates, and episodes. Hey, what's going on, everyone? You are now tuned in to Nabra Talk, the most culture shifting podcast of this generation. I'm your host, Gene the Genius, and today we have an awesome guest with us on the show. This young lady is filled with talent. She's the CEO of Fresh Finds, a writer for Varsity, BPM, and Heritage Hip Hop, and also an intern at Culture Hub. Please welcome Natalie Gilbert. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You very much. Thanks for coming on our talk today. How you doing? I'm good. Yourself? I'm doing pretty good. So um, we're going to get into our key acknowledgments. This is the uh, this is the segment I do to start off the show. Okay. So. I'm really into social media. Are you into social media? Yes, I am. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, be I have to be. <laughs> So um, I was on Twitter yesterday, and um, I came across this tweet, and this is what it said. Uh, it's kind of fu- it, to me. It's kind of funny. I don't know. I want to see how how okay. you take this. So she said, "This girl tweeted. She said, this girl came to my job, and got two monsters for five dollars and thirty cent. I asked her if she wanted another one because they were three for six. She said, Nah, maybe next time." And gave me six dollars in singles and told me to keep the change. <laughs> like to me, that's like like I'm reading it. I don't know. Maybe it was like the time mm-hmm. of when I read it. I was like, all right, that's kind of like it's like it's like make, people make your job harder. Like, come on, bro. Exactly. Yeah. So um, the next one is a little more like uh pretty cool. So how old are you? I'm 23. Okay, you're 23. So you you were around during uh the older older days. Mm-hmm. Um. Don't you, you remember Blockbuster? I remember Blockbuster. Lord, I miss Blockbuster so much. So there's one Blockbuster remaining in the U.S. Really? It's in Bend, Oregon. Huh. Oregon, Oregon. I don't know how people say it, but it's, I say Oregon. But yeah, it's, it's, it's one left. And they said that the manager who works it, she said there's actually a few left in the world. But they're like, it's a small amount. Oh. So um, speaking of Blockbuster, I don't, now for those of you who don't know, what blockbuster is um it it is netflix before netflix (laughs) Uh, but what's better what what was good about blockbuster was um you can rent movies and games and i think they had like tv show series like the seasons yeah Yeah, they had all that so netflix took over obviously and it the rest is history but blockbuster was really popping at one point if you had money if you if you if you was renting like movies (laughs) from blockbuster um so my question to you is, what what are like some of your favorite like childhood movies um, and shows and stuff like that? So one of my favorite um, you know childhood movies has to be Holes with Shia LaBeouf. Oh, That's a classic. I love that movie. Yeah. Um, I also like a lot of Disney movies like Aladdin, um, you know Pocahontas. Yeah. Um, I like the Little Rascals, of course. I have to. I grew up off the Little Rascals. Does that's definitely another movie I have to give credit to. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, just a lot of Nickelodeon movies as well, like the Rugrats when they came out with that their movie. I was the Paris one. Yeah, the Paris yeah. one. I was I was excited for that. It's taking going down memory yeah. lane. When you mentioned Holes, that was that was a heavy hitter. Cause definitely. I read the book in fifth grade. And when I seen the movie, I was like, this movie's pretty good. And yes. actually, I was going through like the HBO movie list mm-hmm. th- listings and it has holes on there. So I got to take I got to really? rewatch that. Yeah, holes hmm. is pretty good. Um, who was your favorite character in that movie? Zero. I was going Definitely Zero. Yeah, Zero with <laughs> Zero was different, bro. Definitely. Everyone knew like son it's something about you, bro. Mm-hmm. Um what about like your favorite like Nickelodeon shows? Oh, that's a good one. Um uh, far as Nickelodeon, I like the Rugrats, of course. I uh, also liked, uh, dang, I can't remember the name, but it had Thornberry in it. Wild Thornberries. Yeah, there you go. The Wild yeah. Thornberries. Uh, I liked SpongeBob, of course, a classic. classic. Uh, what else did I like to watch? Nickelodeon Days. There's just so many Drake shows. and Josh. Drake and Josh, definitely. Yeah. Drake and Josh. Remember Ned's D Classified? Oh, yes. Ned's yeah. Declassified, definitely. That that was, I watched that a lot, too, yeah. growing up. They had that. I don't, people don't remember this one, but um, the Garcia Brothers, the Brothers Garcia. Oh, no, I don't that, remember that. All right, them. so that was a show with, like, like it was a Hispanic family. And mm. I think they, they aired it on Sundays, like Sunday afternoons. And then um, I, I guess it didn't last that long, but I remember watching. It was, like, the, the Brothers Garcia's and everything like that. Yeah. Um, 
Zoe 101 was another Zoe one. Everybody, definitely. <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everybody wanted to go to like boarding school. I definitely wanted to go to that boarding school. But it was like, you could go to boarding school, but it's not going to be like Pacific <laughs> Coast like Academy, yo. <laughs> I was like, yo, they they really was living the life out there, man. Um. Oh, and I have to say cat and dog. Cat dog, yeah, definitely, cat dog. too. Cat that, dog that was, was one of my good. favorites growing up as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, what else? That Drake and Josh Cal Yo, Nickelodeon was lit. Yes, I don't know what happened now, but it just the value of Time, it just appreciated. Yeah, times have changed. So much. Nickelodeon was up there and like Cartoon Network was Cartoon good. Network. Cartoon Ed, Ed, Network Ed, Ed, is still kinda good. Yeah. I mean, they have the amazing world of gumball that's actually one of my favorite for real so i, I seen a clip yeah. this morning it was a ed ed and eddie clip and this the person <laughs> tweeted they said yo y'all remember the episode where uh <laughs> the ed's ed's parents took the stairs out of the basement <laughs> and then they said what happened to the stair they said my my, my parents took it out because i'm grounded <laughs> i was like double d was like that's problematic they said that's <laughs> not good like it's like something's wrong with that yeah. um so my next key acknowledgement, uh, this one I just wanted to mention because it, it's pretty cool. Um, Robert W. Coleman School in Baltimore replaces detention for students with meditation, and it's been like showing positive results. Now, where did you go to school in? Um, so for a while, were you talking about far as elementary, yeah, or elementary, high school? middle school? Um, far as elementary school, I was in private school, but then when I moved, I transition to a public school so how was how was like the discipline the, the, like the disciplinary actions and everything like that they yeah. had detention and stuff yes right? of course so um in public school was a little bit more like hands-on but mm. then when you go to public school it is kind of strict but not as much as it is in public school yeah so the robber so the Robert Coleman detention thing, mm -hmm. they said that ever since they started the whole meditation practice for the kids, um, they've seen positive results. And they started it in 2016, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they use it to calm the students down, obviously, because okay. clearly, like, if a kid is in detention, they've done something wrong. Exactly. So instead of, like, putting them in a room where they got to, again, sit down and be quiet, uh, where... So you're putting them in the same situation that they were in to get them in trouble instead of trying to help them. So clearly they, the school's like, all right, this is clearly not working. So what they did was, uh, let's meditate. And they said that it's helped the kids' anxiety, their stress levels. Some kids even go home now and they don't argue with their parents anymore. They take deep breaths and they're like, you know what? Hmm. Woo -sa. <laughs> I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to go to my room since you want to argue and everything like that. My school taught me <laughs> I don't got to argue with you. These are kids, though. so like um, they said, the suspension rates have gone down, which is pretty good. Uh, I just feel like my question to you is like, do you do you think medica meditation can be a, a, an effective practice throughout all the schools? Or I do. You think I so? do feel like it would have a positive impact, especially on the youth, because you know they're so used to growing up so angry. So mm -hmm. just having that meditation would just just lay it all out and have them be calm and actually let them think about what they're doing before they actually do it. Because yeah. most times, you know, kids just work off emotions. So mm -hmm. this way they have a way to, you know, work off their emotion in a different way. Yeah. Now, what do you, what do you think this says about the school that implemented this whole practice? I feel like they really care for their students enough to do it. They're not just pushing it to the side saying mm. hey you got in trouble go to detention yeah. saying hey you know we see that you're going to a detention for a certain reason so why don't we try to help you and figure out exactly why it is that you're going to detention yeah yeah my thing is um this just shows me that um there are schools that do care about their students mm -hmm. um because to try something like that you're gonna go through some trial and error first exactly. um but it's showing that you know what how long has detention been around the education system? For Centuries, years, yeah. right? So it's like, ah, right, y'all put kids in detention, they come right back, they get in, they they get in trouble again, mm -hmm. and then they get you put them in detention. It's not exactly. working. So it's like they're showing you. I think they, what this what it says is like, okay, we clearly know there's like a mental health issue going mm -hmm. on around. Kids have anxiety, kids have stress, and if you're an adult, you cannot tell a kid that they're not stressed out. 
just because they don't pay bills or they don't go to work. Exactly. They have stress because of grades and at home and stuff like that. So if you put that into consideration and you say, okay, how can we at least decrease the stress level of a child in order for them to perform a little better in school? I'm not saying they're going to all get A's, but yeah. you can turn an F into a C, which Definitely. is improvement, right? Um, I just think that's what they were thinking about, and they say the 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 uh, the whole um, the pro- progress shows in the students and everything like that, yeah. and they even took it home with them. It's like you, as a parent, you'd want your kid coming home learning something. Right? It's like, what'd you learn in school today? I learned how to meditate. At first, you're like, I ain't bringing you to school to meditate. <laughs> But then you see, like, their attitude changes mm-hmm. and they, they're actually talking to you a little differently and stuff like that. Oh, I think I like this whole meditation exactly. thing, you know. Um, when we return from this quick break, I'm going to give you guys my genius of the week. Find out which rapper is restoring value in old abandoned homes with his own company. There's an impact that your glare has on my life Every side Ooh, oh, oh. Mm. Let me set a time to help me clarify Oh, I Just bring me that sunrise I'll describe similarities The projection of your beauty affects everything What's up, Nabra family? Welcome back to Nabra Talk. Today, we have with us Natalie Gilbert. 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so before we went on our break, I told you guys I'd give you my genius of the week. But before we go into that, Natalie, what does a genius mean to you? Um, a genius is someone that is always thinking outside of the box. They don't conform to normal beliefs or ideas and they're just always on their toes trying to figure out things for themselves nice that's basically what a genius is to me I like that answer that's good it's funny because everyone who's giving me that their answer for genius is not the same answer but they all connect mm -hmm. one way or another definitely um so my genius of the week uh goes to slim thug do you remember slim thug yes I yeah remember slim thug. so we're not we're not the babies babies we're, we've grown <laughs> up on some real rap so uh -huh. you got you got to know real rap to know slim thug so slim thug uh he founded the construction boss life company so what he does with this constructing construction company is mm -hmm. goes out to different cities and he buys old abandoned property and he flips them and he puts value into the homes. And, you know, when you drive out to certain places, whatever neighborhood you're in, you see those old houses and no one's living in them. So what he does is he buys them. He uses his own construction company, um, which means he's getting a percentage of that payment, too. Oh, okay. Um, and he flips it. He sells the home and he gets a percentage of that, too. That's cool. That, you know, that's in my, my question to you is why do you think rappers are following this movement? in regards to like property investment because this was not a thing back in the day that's true artists like you didn't hear about um rappers buying homes and invest like why do you think it's it, you're seeing more of it today um i think i'm seeing more of it today more so that the the homeless rate is going up as well uh so i feel like that plays a part as well as we're having more artists that do want to show more love to their communities as well i mean back in the day yes that was a thing but it wasn't really something that was big but mm -hmm. with the new artists coming in they understand they come from they're coming from a community where you know not a lot of opportunities are given for people to live in these homes or to even you know buy a home at that so i think that just has a lot to do with it as well yeah that's true because when we were growing up you didn't hear about any of that it was like definitely yeah it, 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 it would probably be foreign to them, like, oh, mm -hmm. you got to buy property. Why do I have to buy property? Because that's that's literally what you, that's like the first thing you want when you have money. And remember MTV Cribs? Yes, I remember. None of those homes were theirs. Mm -hmm. That is like, that, that kind of hurt me. It's like, <laughs> I thought you were rich. I thought exactly. this was your house. <laughs> But yeah, you learn like that's not their house. Um, they pay to do the episode and they walk around. And some of them maybe like the the uh, the celebrity athletes. Mm -hmm. That's probably their crib. Yeah, like I I believe that because they make real money. Mm -hmm. But as far as like those rappers and stuff like that, you learn like I'm pretty sure you know like in, in the in the rap industry or the music industry period, it is hard to become like a multi millionaire because. Definitely. When you make the money, it goes out to so many different people. Like, if you make a million dollars, you're probably going to see maybe, like, a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it all depends. But, yeah, like, that whole, like, property investment for rappers today, I think is I think it's a movement now because Jay-Z kind of started it. That's true. Um, I think he's, he's a good, he's a great influence in that. And also, like, other rappers who hasn't been in the scenes, like Chameleon Air, um, he used to he, he made that song Hip Hop Police mm. um, and there was a post where they said um, it was like a couple years ago and they said what's Chameleon Air doing at an NBA game floor seats we didn't see him in Mad Long people were like so <laughs> so it was like what does that have? they said he bought he, he took the money he made for a few years as a rapper he bought property in California so he did a few home investments and then from there, he started uh, going into tech. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you don't, the, the thing is, you don't hear about those rappers very often because sure. their agenda is not for you to do that. Their agenda is for you to uh, be that, that same rapper that they've always been portraying on their platform. So it's, it's like, why you want to get into the property investment for it? Because, like you said, it helps my community. If I, if I own a house, then I could put somebody in there that exactly. I know, as opposed to you having to go to someone else who don't really know you. They could kick you out whenever, you know, and, and, exactly. and, and stuff like that. So now my thing, my question is, how does this affect other artists 
in the music industry do you think it it, it it it'll leave like a like a point like plant a seed in their minds like maybe maybe when i get my first million or something like that i'll, I'll buy some property i feel like due to today's generation they aren't thinking that way um, you see nowadays, let's say Blueface, for instance, <laughs> just flashing off his jewelry and his yeah. cars. So their mindset's going to be on, oh, if I want to be the best rapper, I have to invest in getting, you know, jewelry that's really unnecessary or yeah. cars or shoes. So uh, there's just going to be have to be that one artist that just does it. it just yeah. makes the, the huge impact. I mean, I think I think Nipsey made an impact on that, too, because he was definitely really into that. Um, mm -hmm. Before his passing, I think he, he, one of his next moves were to buy some real estate property so mm -hmm. he can, like, start putting people in the home. I think he has some already, but I think he wanted to do some yeah. more. Um, my whole thing is the um, there are avenues now for you to learn. So it's up mm -hmm. to the person. It's up to the artist. Like, if you're a rapper, like you said, like Blueface, I'm not gonna say because these these kids are young, right? What yeah, are they like? True. 18? Yeah, 19, I mean, like 19. 20. So you tell an 18, 19 year old who's a rapper making making money off of streams, you gotta buy a property. It's gonna be hard for them to get that. Exactly. They might have to lose some money first. Like they gonna have That's to true. lose maybe everything, and then be like, I right, I know how to get this, but when I get it next time, I'm gonna actually invest in it and stuff. Yeah. And Jay Z talks about that. He tells like. He said he's, but he, the thing is, people say, "Oh, he's talking about this in four for four. He's actually been talking about this his entire career. It's just mm. when we're young, we don't pay attention to that. Yeah. So that's that's the whole thing. Now, um, so yeah, uh, Slim Thug, you you wanted to say anything else? Oh no, that's you good. Yeah, I'm good. All right, so yeah, so Slim Thug, that's my genius of the week. Um, make sure you guys check him out. And if you guys ever want to get into like property investments, it's not hard. There's different ways. There's different avenues. You don't need to be filthy rich to start. Um, you could have as low as like eight grand, ten grand to start with property investment, and um, you go from there. I would say this though: what you want to become is also followed by what you follow on like Instagram and Twitter. So like, if you want to get into property investment and real estate and you know stocks and stuff like that follow those pages people be giving free game for yes. like it's crazy how much Definitely. information like i learned that with a simple credit score average credit score and you buy a house three percent down you put three percent down on the house mm -hmm. right you could buy that house with a 650 credit score or lower hmm. right so they say you put down eight thousand ten thousand dollars right about ten thousand dollars on a crib you don't have well and then you live there for a year so after you live there for a year you can rent it out to somebody oh. that's it that's one income right there so you make that income what you do next buy another house exactly and then you put a couple of tenants in there another form of income so now you got two houses and you got probably four three or four tenants yeah now you're making money while mm -hmm. you're doing other things and that's the, that's just, and that's just that's just the basics, right? Of course, yeah. you, there's other things you got to consider, of like the um the zoning and you know the, the the regulations of the house and everything. But you can learn that while you're doing it, and you find the right people. Like I said, you follow the right pages, you gonna learn these things. Exactly. I learned this because I follow uh, DJ Envy because he does oh, home okay. flipping. Yeah, he does. He flips houses. He uh he um there's a page called Flipping New Jersey, so they do seminars. And they did a seminar in Detroit, but they found a building in Detroit. You know, like Detroit is like kind of like urban yeah. and stuff like that. So they found a building for five hundred thousand dollars, right? Of course, they ha I'm sure they have that kind of money they could put together. Now, if the building found a thousand, you put ten percent, so maybe they need fifty grand. Mm -hmm. So you put fifty grand down, and they said in about a few years. They could make about three million, six million dollars. Wow, that's a lot. That's that's just you get the building, you fix it up. Now the building, an apartment building, is gonna take a little longer to to rehab, right? But yeah. it's worth it because you'll probably spend maybe I don't know, let's say a fifty grand. So that's a hundred grand you invested in the building, fifty grand because it's a whole apartment complex. So in a few years, you you get that fifty grand, that hundred grand back, but you're making three million off of that. That's property that. investment. That th you don't need a college degree. You don't need anything. You just need 
probably some a couple licenses and that's it yeah so that's what that's what slim thug's doing you know so shout out to him um we're gonna get into you though natalie okay. we're gonna we're gonna talk about what you do okay and uh how you got into this whole underground music industry so first who is natalie gilbert uh, Natalie Gilbert is the founder of the Fresh Finds. Um, she's a big sister to, to four girls, um, the oldest at that, which is insane still to me. <laughs> uh, she's the a freelance writer for a couple of different sites. Uh, she also does sales on the side at Choice Home Warranty, which is funny because you mentioned you know home. So yeah. uh, she's she's also just someone who's willing to just go get her dreams nice. basically um so you are the ceo of fresh finds right yes what what is fresh finds and what is the goal of the platform so fresh finds is basically um you know a blog platform that gives underground artists exposure um it's also um, a social media platform for them as well to get exposure as well okay um, my goal with that I'm still running around with a couple ideas, but maybe just make the blog page bigger than the page itself, just to give underground artists still that opportunity to be heard. Yeah, yeah. Um. So as a CEO, what are your three rules for your career? Stay consistent. Communication is the key. And just lend a hand whenever I can. Facts. Thing, lend, lending a hand is always important because people always want something definitely but it's like what what are you giving in return or what are you giving before someone can give exactly. you something exactly and you know? i've so. seen so many sites just want money but not even do research on the actual artist that's crazy so you know i make it my job to do research on the artist and you know just let them know that they are actually being heard rather than just putting their money somewhere mm -hmm. and not even getting you know the credit or the knowledgeability of what they need right. as well. So what got you into like blogging and everything and what are what are your, like what are some of your favorite things to write about? So um, it all started when I went to the Meadows. It's a big concert in New York. It's like a three day festival. And uh, I went there the second day I saw my favorite band, the Flatbush Zombies. And I said to myself, you know, not a lot of underground artists have a platform like this mm -hmm. where they can you know, like I said, be heard or, you know, just get the attention that they need to get to the next level. So yeah. I just wanted to be that person to do that. Um, I've always loved writing it since I was a kid. Like I would always just write little short novels. My grandma and my other family would always say, oh, you're such a good writer. But I was just like, well, whatever, that's <laughs> whatever. So I just decided, you know, I do want to implement my writing and just music as a whole because i always did love the underground scene growing up as well i just feel like since i knew so much underground music that i was different than everyone you know i wasn't saying oh i like this drake song i was saying oh i like this person and they'd be like who is that and they do research and they'd be like oh that's actually a really good artist like, yeah. thanks for putting this on so i just wanted to implement the two ideas together and now here we are that's good so now now you have eyes and ears in the underground, mm -hmm. you know, scenery. Um, so, what do you love the most about underground music? I like the uniqueness of it. I love how everybody isn't conforming to being something that they're not. I love how free they are to express themselves, and you know, just the hunger as well is very inspirational as well. Yeah. I've seen a lot of artists. Um, I'll mention when Ethan Ross, I see him like just going out to to colleges, just rap, doing freestyles in front of random people, and that's something that's really admirable because you know <laughs> not a lot of people would do that yeah, at exactly. all. Yeah, exactly, for real. And that that just shows like I was gonna I was gonna ask you like how can you tell when someone does it for like you know for the um for satisfaction of others or when they actually do it for themselves and that would be an example where it's exactly. like Yo, i just really do this because i like doing it exactly um what have you learned thus far being in the underground industry of music um i've learned that it's just a trial and error like you'll have some people that support you 
you'll have some people that don't but if you stay true to yourself then that's all that really matters yeah um do you do you ever feel like people try to undermine you because you're young and also because you're female do you do you, do you go through that in some situations i have had uh, like a couple of um you know situations where you know because i'm a female they feel the need to act a certain way towards me. Mm. But far as undermining, I haven't dealt with that as of yet. Like I'm still learning about the music industry as well. Okay. Whole, so, um, <clears throat> how many how many people um, now? Many people in Jersey say like New Jersey does not support Jersey <laughs> enough, right? I've hear I've heard this mm-hmm. so many times. Do you feel that way? Do you see that? Somewhat to an extent, I feel like there's too many clicks yeah in new jersey but when you do find the people that are willing to support you that's what matters yeah that's true because and my thing with that is um i get it because we're such a small state we're such mm-hmm. a small area it's like there's no reason why we shouldn't uh all be together exactly but my thing is everyone does things you know we're mm-hmm. all creatives in a certain way um, I understand that we don't get support for certain things, um, and you can't blame people for that. At the yeah. end of the day, people are going to support what they feel like supporting. Exactly. You know, you can't blame your friends. You can't be mad at your friends if they don't want to support your craft. If they say, if they're like, hey, I'm your friend, that does not mean I have to buy your music or buy your clothes. Mm-hmm. I'm your friend. I'll Like, that's it. I can tell. Now, here's the key. You can... You don't have to support my stuff. Like you don't have to buy it or hear it, but you can pass it on. Exactly. That's even like he's like, look, <laughs> I, don't, I don't listen to it, but I'll pass it on to somebody else if they do. I think that's that's another cool thing um, that we can try to work on as people. Because I I try to do that as much as I can. Like mm-hmm. sometimes I may not listen to something, or I may not, you know, watch something or buy anything. But if you know, you never know. Somebody else might like it. And that's that's Definitely. all that matters. What are who are your three favorite underground artists at the moment? Right now, um, so Dre Scuffs. Uh, that's a good one because I've been listening Scuffs. to a lot of people lately. Um, currently, I've been listening to a lot more Babyface. I'm not sure if you know who Babyface is. He's really good. Babyface, baby. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's from West Orange. I'm not sure. Sorry. If oh wait, this. wait, I know Babyface. He <laughs> makes music with like uh, Chris. Uh, Chris, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Chris Patrick. Yeah, definitely I, on the I list. I had him. Yeah, I had Chris Patrick. Yeah, was, Chris Patrick's yeah. definitely on the list too. That's the third one right now. Um, Did, how he just you like released his freestyle. I loved it. Like as he sent it to me because uh, I reposted it. I heard it a day early, and I was just like, wow. Yeah. He really did go to work. I said he wanted the. Be- <laughs> I said he was one of the best rappers in he Jersey, is. and that yes. had a few people offended. Like I'm. I'm like, look, bro. He's really good. He's, yo, he he freestyled on our radio show a few mm-hmm. months ago, like last year. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what? Yo, what? <laughs> I I think I still have it too. But um, you see how it starts a whole wave when you make when you make statements like yes. that. Yo, this is the this the best uh freestyle or the best rapper in Jersey. Exactly. Everyone like, wait, what? That's not true. Like, okay, well, I haven't seen anything else exactly. but him who's actually putting <laughs> real work in his craft. Exactly. Like you can't be mad. If you if you feel that type of way, either come up here or put out a track that says otherwise. Don't argue Definitely. with me. I'm just a critic. <laughs> That's it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm just a critic. You can't argue with me. Um, and I'm definitely excited for his new music coming out too. Like a whole project. Yes. Nice. Yes. I, I seen a tweet about that too. Yeah, he so. actually uh, recently, before he released something with "It's Wonderful" and "Babyface." It's called the WTF tape. I, I think. Believe. Yeah. Three I think. I, yeah. 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 I seen yeah. that. Yeah. It's so dope. Like following like young artists. Exactly. Bro. It's so dope. And I know they be out there like going to these shows mm-hmm. and all that. Can't wait till I get back on the road to, yeah, to like I just go that, to these things. <laughs> um, what else? Like, uh, so what's like your favorite thing about the whole like underground scene? Is it like the the ele- the elevation of the artists, like seeing them rise as a underground artist to uh, to how they get to like you know their own platform of fame and everything like definitely. that? Definitely, I feel like the growth is definitely the most enjoyable thing to see to just see them you know just consistently working towards something and then finally making it word how about you Me? what is it about it the underground scene that that appeals to you 
Um, I like I just like their grind in their heart. That's where you really know an, art, an artist. It's like okay. they're willing to go through this phase in the stage of putting out so much work. Like you know when you when mm-hmm. when like uh, a rapper comes out like the how do you say the uh they're com- when you say the commercial now, right? Mm-hmm. They're mainstream. They're mainstream and then because they're mainstream they don't put out as many projects. Definitely. So but you have to go to the before mainstream and you see mm-hmm. dad you put out all this work and like <laughs> yes they put out all of that work yes. so when they do get to mainstream they can, they all they only got to put out like an album a year or mm-hmm. album every other year but before that they're putting out a project every month or every 3 months or whatever the case might be i just like that because you can tell when someone's hungry for something you can Definitely. tell who's re- who really wants it and who really like just is just trying to I don't know, just doing it for clout. Yeah, you know, like, and we're gonna talk about the whole clout thing because I, I just feel like uh, that's something that needs to be addressed, especially when you're you as a as a um, as like a blogger and a PR. Don't you or do you ever try to distinguish that, like someone who's just doing this for clout and someone who's actually doing, it, or do you, you don't care about that? Um, for the most part, I haven't really looked into the clout aspect of it. Because I haven't dealt with artists that are just doing it for clout, but I'm pretty sure that when it day does come, that I will know. Yeah, you'll be able to tell. Yeah. So we might as well get into the whole like clout Definitely. discussion, right? So my uh, one of my um, followers, have you heard of Jan Sneed? No. You never heard of her? She's from Jersey. She uh she has like a her own little um base of like artists who gets it but she does more than music uh just she does more than just music now okay um so she tweeted she said i can't uh she said um where did where is it all right so she said while she was waiting for the train she noticed a group of teenagers twerking on camera for social media and she went on to say i just want to thank god we weren't weirdos for clout in middle (laughs) school and high school so first of all what what's your idea of clout Cloud is just, um, you know, just gaining attention to get to the next level. That's what I think cloud is. I I think cloud is, um, cause what a uh, what you see now, like like when we talk about, let's say someone like a pub, public figure on Instagram mm-hmm. has like five hundred thousand followers, cause they've done consistent videos of, I don't know, stupidity and ignorance, right? Yeah. But people like it because nowadays that's what people like. Exactly. So, and then next thing you know, you see them on like a Pepsi commercial. So you're like, how the heck they get there? And then the first response you're going to get is he got clout. That's it. Yeah. So it's like my idea of clout is you just have influence. It, it doesn't have to be good or bad. It's just you have influence. Influence is you have 500,000 people that's watching. You have 500,000 eyes on you. And that's all that matters. But my thing with clout is you're not going to say Will Smith has clout. Yeah. I think that's now he's bigger than clout. I think when it comes to clout, it's just someone who's just after one specific thing because they want attention. They mm-hmm. don't know why they want the, they want the attention. They just want the attention because I guess they they know it feels good. They know that, you know, they can get people to look at them i don't know it's just it's just weird to me it's it's hard to explain so like my home like what like how do you feel about um because we live in that era right now exactly yes you know so it's like wherever you go you like she's like you said she was went on the train you just see girls filming other girls for that but i think clout came before this time i think it was always around um it's just because of social media and how big it's gotten it's just mm-hmm. more exposed. Exactly. Yeah, in MySpace, Facebook. Um, what, was, what was there before Instagram? You had yeah, Facebook. I think there's just Facebook MySpace. and MySpace, yeah. And people were doing that already. So my thing is, like, based on cloud, what's your take on the whole idea of people chasing it? Like, I feel like um, the idea of them chasing it just, just comes from them wanting to the attention basically that uh that's actually a good question got me stuck (laughs) (laughs) um for as far as clout i guess it just all comes from wanting to be famous 
I mean, look at Kim Kardashian. That was, was clout. clout. That definitely so was clout. I feel like she's probably one of the people that started that movement as well. That, oh, if I do this stupid thing, I don't have to have a talent. I don't have to sing. I don't have to write. If I just do one idiotic thing, <laughs> then that's that's bound to get me to the next level. And they got her to the next yes, level. Yes, did. <laughs> she used it correctly, though. Yep. <laughs> right? It's like, all she right. did. So she, she probably had a plan. She's like, you know what? I'm going to get this clout thing going. Mm-hmm. When I get it, I'm not going to let it go. Some people, they get clout, and it's like, you know, it's like, all right. It's like saying, all right, guys, I got I got an announcement to make. Come around, gather around, gather around. Mm-hmm. So everyone's around you. You're like, what's the announcement? You're like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just glad I got you guys exactly. around. It's like really, so now people now it's gonna be harder for people to get your. You, it's gonna be harder for you to get people's attention because the first time you got their attention, you wasted their time. Exactly. Kim Kardashian, although I'm not a big fan of hers and I don't really follow her like that, mm-hmm. she got her clout doing something stupid, but she knew I, I can't do. I can't keep doing this. Exactly. I have to actually turn myself into a businesswoman, and she did. Right? Yeah, you know, she did. She did. Um, all right. Would you say cloud is the modern day drug? Yes. You think absolutely. so? Absolutely. Well, it was one of them. I think it's, yeah. it's one of the modern day drugs. <laughs> Happy 420. <laughs> Word. <laughs> shout out to you. Shout out to all the 420s out there. <laughs> um, why, why do you say it's a drug? Um, uh, I would say it's a drug because, you know, a lot of people are just after it. I mean, even if it means doing something really stupid, that's going to follow them for the rest of their life. They're willing to do it. And they lose themselves while doing it. Exactly. You know, tr- drugs, you know, that's what, it, that's what it does to you. And you lose yourself trying to get something that only lasts. For so long. For so long. So it's like people get high off of, you literally, because what's, what's the word? Dopamine? Dopamine, yes. Yeah, it's like it's dopamine in the light, the, the, the satisfaction of getting that one like, mm-hmm. getting that retweet and stuff like that. And it's like, if I could get this much i'm gonna try to get that much and that much and that much and yeah it, it is a drug and my friends all say it all the time he said cloud is one hell of a drug mm. and we're gonna be old people like oh, i'm a man <laughs> we rocking in chairs like y'all on that cloud again y'all on that cloud again <laughs> girls do the girls have their own form of cloud chasing mm-hmm. i don't want to get into that because people will come at me for it but we you know as a woman you know what, what yes, women do for cloud chasing men have their own form of cloud chasing mm-hmm. but that's why i said like cloud has always been around i think social media just exposed it now exactly. so it was like if you have gold if you had a gold chain if you if you were someone who's into jewelry and you know i need i need jewelry and nice cars and stuff like that to mm-hmm. to you know get attention from people Back in the day, you ain't have Twitter and social media to show people you got that. Now you do. It's like, I bet I'm going to do this. And back in the day, you didn't have Twitter, Instagram to show off your body and, you know, everything that, you know, that comes with you. So it's like social media, you got that now. So it's like you have you have everything at your fingertips in order for you to get the attention that you need. Now, some people would say, well, it's not hurting nobody. Is it though? Is it not? Who who's it hurting? The youth that's watching these things. In what way? These things, just the influence it has. You know, like the youth picks up just so much. I mean, imagine them seeing someone twerk. True. That would give them the idea, like, hey, it's acceptable for me to do it, so I'm going to do it. And they're getting all the attention in that, exactly. as opposed to just being a normal person. Exactly. Like we don't even see kids outside anymore. We don't Bruh. see them outside anymore. I seen kids outside like a <laughs> few weeks ago. I was like, "Wow, this is great!" Exactly. They're like it's crazy when you old, you you're getting older and like, "Yo, it's really kids outside." Because mm-hmm. when we were young, everybody was outside. Exactly. Everybody. everybody was outside. Now you go on a block, you gotta like go on a hunt to see who's outside. Exactly. Bro. It's They're sad. On social media and you know, Lord imagines what they see nowadays. The only time I see people kids outside on social media is when there's a fight. Yep. <laughs> some these are all right people and you see the cash in mm-hmm. it's some crazy you are right, somebody about to get knocked out. And I'm like, come on guys, why can't we be outside for something regular? Like exactly. I seen a vi- I seen a picture and it was a whole neighborhood it just brought me, it gave me like a um, nostalgia because mm-hmm. 
it had a basketball hoop in the street. You had some kids on in that house playing around. You had another kid in the other house in front of the yard. It's just like, yo, this was really my childhood. Now you go. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't been on a block where there's a bunch of kids outside. Yeah. Where it's just fun. I have not seen that for a long time. Um, now, my thing is, since we've grown up in the clout era and we're still growing in it, I think, and you say there is a bad influence on it. How do you think we can, because we're not going to stop it. That's true. There's no way of stopping it. But how can you change someone's mindset in order for them to say, look, you don't have to really chase clout in order for you to be successful. I just feel like that all comes with people that are growing up in the generation. There's going to have to be more people out there that have more of a positive influence than a bad influence. So with that, I feel like the people with the good influence should try to push it out there more that, you know, you don't have to do these things to be famous. Even even just people beyond the clout could yeah. help as well. Like. They could give out that message that you don't have to be this way. Yeah. You know, just tell their backstories. Because we don't often hear a lot about the backstories of how they got there. Mm. So I feel like them telling their backstory as to how hard they worked would inspire the youth and, you know, more generations to come to work hard to get to where they need to be. Yeah, because, like I said, clout is another form of 15 seconds of 15 minutes of fame. Mm -hmm. Would you say Lil Nas is on a clout ride right now? I would say it. You think I so? Would say it. I would say it. Dang. That song slaps, though. That song is good, though. That song is good. But did you hear what uh, Dave East had to say? No. What did Dave East say? <sighs> Dave East was like, bro, that Old Town Road song is whack. What? <laughs> He's like, I don't know what's going on with rap. It's not rap no more. I was like, <laughs> bro, the song slaps, bro. We not like, he, he acting like we making uh, Lil Nas like the greatest rapper exactly. of all time. Yeah. Like, bro. If you don't like my thing is all right. If you don't like something, why do you talk about it? Yeah. I don't like nothing. I like there's not a thing I like that I m mention. Like you'll never hear me talking about something I dislike, right? But if you don't like the song, why do you care? It's just like exactly we, just keep it to yourself. That's it. This dude says whack. This is not hip hop. This is not rap. Maybe bro. he just wanted some clout in the moment. <laughs> that's oh. that's another form of clout chasing, <laughs> yeah. bro. You mad that? A young brother was able to create something, it got out, and now it's on the billboards. But your music talking about killing and, you know, de degrading women mm -hmm. is not hitting the billboards. And my thing, I like Dave East. Yeah. He's a good rapper. He's actually pretty good. The problem mm -hmm. is, I think, with these rappers today is they don't realize it's going to be hard for you to make the billboard charts when your music is very <laughs> traumatic, bro. <laughs> no one's trying to hear that when they're on their way to work exactly. in the morning, bro. Like, come on. Like, we're not saying le we're not saying switch sides, but you can make one track that's just nice for exactly. everybody. Exactly, exactly. Nothing that's violent, degrading women, on, talking bro. about drugs and all oh, your you tracks know, sex about that, bro. And stuff like come that. on, man. Yeah. Lil Nas, I'm sure Lil Nas got other real raps out there, but he was yeah. like, you know what? Like country little nice little country exactly. song. Exactly. No one's hit. done it. And that's it. Then he went on. He Nelly walked so Lil Nas could fly. <laughs> exactly. You feel me? And that was I think that was amazing. That song is fire. And, and mm -hmm. I know there's black people like, yo, this junk is whack. I'm like, come on, bro. Cause if the Migos did a country song, y'all would lose it. Exactly. You guys would go crazy if Migos did something like that. If Drake got on a country <laughs> song, yeah, y'all would go nuts. Um, any of these mainstream artists that were to do something like that, you guys would go ballistic. And you would say, this is movement. This is a movement. It's changing, exactly. right? But a young little brother had the audacity to talk to Billy Ray Cyrus. He made a song. Is what, number one? It's probably still number one. I think one. it's number one. It's it passed one. Drake. That's oh, that's why, that's why. That's why they don't like it. Yeah, it, it passed, passed Drake. Drake. Um, you know, it took him a while, but he went farther than drake in the charts um far as you know time length as to get to the top of the charts mm, mm, mm. i think he had more streams than drake i read about yep. it was one of those things situations i just like creativity bro people so. people hate acknowledging creativity it's like <clears throat> how dare you do something like that mm -hmm. yeah come on bro it's just music exactly. you gonna you gonna tell somebody 
That's not all right. So what is it then? It's not. It's not rap. And then the country people. It's not country. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what is it? Is it? <laughs> so what is it, bro? It's just music. Okay. And he wanted the kid got out of his element, got out of his comfort zone, and he made something that's dope. Now, you say he. This is his clout block bug. That's gonna last. What? Maybe, maybe another month. Another something. month, and then you, it's like then we gonna he gonna have to test his real music strengths, exactly. right? Exactly. So, but yeah. Um, what else about Cloud? Now you did mention like we never like figure out the person who's uh doing that whole cloud chasing. That's another important thing because sometimes it's a cry for help. Mm. Um, someone who's cloud chasing, of course, it's an attention seeker, just like a kid who's in a classroom or or anywhere where. They might be doing something wrong, yeah. and they know the only way I'm going to get attention right now is if I do something crazy. Sometimes they need that attention because they don't have that at home. So I feel like it'll be hard to do that with a grown man, like a kid who's 18 or 19. By that time, it's a little too late. So we might be able to slow that whole clout thing down if we actually start listening to our younger kids. Exactly. So, yeah, clout could be... I'm not going to say we could stop the whole thing, but... We could stop a majority of it. Yeah, because it's crazy out here, bro. Like, mm-hmm. clout chasing is... <sighs> now, Jackass, they I think they started clout chasing. Mm-hmm. I was watching some of their videos, and... Um, but they did it for money. Like, they did it for money, though. Some people do stuff for free. <laughs> like, you had Book Gang... Oh my god, that, that guy scared me for some reason. It was just something about maybe the and all the tattoos he had in his face. I don't know something. Boo about Gang, him that just he was mentally ill because he he mm. did things like I used to see his videos and they bothered me because he did things where he disrupted people's businesses, right? Mm-hmm. So it was like, okay. You're you're going to throw yourself in this man's um, cart of you know food or whatever he's selling. Because you needed a hundred thousand likes or a hundred thousand views, that bothers me. That bothered me because I'm putting myself in this man's shoes. Like, yo, I prepared this since five in the mm-hmm. morning, and now I gotta clean it up because someone's child, who is eighteen years old, is acting like a child exactly. in public. And that was my thing. It's like, and and if you do want to chase clout. At least use your talent for it. <laughs> exactly. At least use your talent. Like, you could, like, I think everyone is chasing clout in some way. I say I'm chasing clout. I'm not going to lie. Mm. I, I probably am. But my thing is I'm chasing it for longevity. So it was like, you can't say, oh, he did this just to be famous. It's more of trying to be, like, um, important. Like, someone who made an impact. Exactly. There's people who do clout to, just because they... They just like like we said, they just want attention, mm-hmm. right? Um, do you feel like you're chasing clout? I don't feel like I'm chasing clout. I'm here to make an influence and, you know, just let people know that you can do it. Like, if you just keep at it, you can do what you believe in. Word, word. Um, do you believe that you're, like, anybody in your life is chasing for clout? Um, yes, I know someone. Okay. I don't, I'm not going to say he's chasing clout. <laughs> okay. But he was a very quiet kid growing up. I went okay. to church with him. Um, quiet, quiet as a mouse. You don't know what he's thinking. All of a sudden, one of our friends introduced him to Twitter, and all of that changed, bro. <laughs> this kid, mm-hmm. he tweets, like, he's gone, he's had a few tweets that's gone viral. Oh, a wow. few of them has gone viral. Um, he had a video where women, I don't know if you've seen the video, but they were all naked women and they were screaming. So he's like, I'm going to just sit this video here and y'all let me know whatever the hell this means. And it went viral and some women were like, well, if you didn't know, this is a symbol of women, feminism, all that. He's like, yeah, 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 whatever. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I, I wouldn't say he's chasing clout. I mean, if you're gonna chase clout like that, just trolling on Twitter, that's that's nothing. Like, um, but I don't have, I don't, I don't know anyone personally who goes out and does stupid stuff. If if they did, I'd have to talk to you about that. Like, exactly. yo, you gonna have to chill out, or we cannot be friends. Mm. Um, because who you associate with is important. Exactly. So, you do you know anyone who chases clout? Not yet. 
not yet, but I'm pretty sure along the road I will finally meet someone who does. Probably. Fat Boy was another one. Oh, yes. Did you, meet, you ever met him? I've never met him. But... but I know I've, before he started getting into his music career, that yeah. was something he was chasing after. And, you know, kudos to him. Because he, right? he, tur- he turned it around, Because he turned it around. Yeah. It's like, because when I see those videos, I'm like, damn, do I have to go to a restaurant and throw food? I'm like, do I have to do this? It's like, nah, you don't got to do that. Because it's like, they did that because they felt like they needed to. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you don't have to, you don't have to yell and be obnoxious in public. And mm-hmm. you don't have to disrupt people's businesses exactly. in order for you to get to where you need to be. They did it. It worked out for them. They didn't go to jail mm-hmm. and all that. But um, for most of y'all out there, it is not necessary. It is not in the success tips book. Does not you don't have to go that, that way. Okay. Speaking of writers, sorry, to, uh, but who are you like your favorite like journalists or writers out there? Oh, uh, actually, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. There was a recent article I read by this guy. His name is Sama, I believe. It was about uh, Drake's selfie that he took on a, a airplane, mm-hmm. and they he's just basically explaining the controversy of the selfie. Um, you know, because in with the song with Travis Sickle Mode, yeah. you know, he talks about taking a Zan. So I thought that was a really good article to read. Um, I also started reading this girl. Uh, her name is Amber Corillon, and she just uh, started writing for Hip Hop DX. So I've just been reading her stuff as well. Um, the last article I read was uh, she did, she wrote about Kalani's producer for her latest project. Nice. And how, you know, it all came about. So I thought that was a really good story to read. Basically, it's about, um, you know, how her producer met a girl and she spoke a different language. So he went the lengths to try to learn that language that she spoke so mm-hmm. that way they could communicate. And I thought that was, like, a really good, enjoyable read It's pretty well. cool. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Um, do you... <clears throat> Do you have, like, um, do you only write about, like, music, or do you so, write about... So, um, for Heritage Hip Hop, uh, what I've done is I've written about people outside of just, you know, the artistry. So, uh, the recent person I've covered was someone who started a fashion, you know, um, their oh, own I, clothing line. Yeah. Sorry, like, the oh, words. That's cool. Yeah, so I just wrote about somebody who, you know, was trying to make their own clothing line, so... Um, With that, I'm trying to implement that it's not just about the artists. It's people that work outside of that as well, behind the scenes. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you, how do you like, because you do a lot. How do you manage that time, especially with like personal time and everything? Uh, I just try to make time. Where is it like, he could, he could point for this. I stayed up to like three o'clock in the morning Mm. writing an album review for my internship. So basically I just try to make things for the things that I love. Now the album review, that's for another underground artist. Um, That was for my internship at Culture Hub. I just recently started. Mm -hmm. How do you, now there's, if a, if a young artist, not a young artist, well, artists are listening or maybe a journalist, someone who's in college, Mm-hmm. What advice would you give them as far as like how to move in an industry like this? Because I know because you're in a lot of different things. Would you say is it you know your best your best way to success is making sure you're available to as many important platforms yes. that, out there? Yes, right? it's, it's very important to just put yourself out there. Uh, where it'd be if you take on like two extra tasks in the day if they see that then that's really admirable and they're going to want to keep working with you mm-hmm. i've had people just come up to me and ask and you know sometimes i'll just even ask them if i could write for them and they'll say yes so it's just all about balance like having some people ask and then you asking some people as well. yeah that's good how, how how would you say the the whole like communication is amongst like the people you work with uh, I feel like it's good. I feel like it's really good. Um, you know, sometimes I'll just have to keep, you know, nagging, but yeah. that's all part of the game. Then you have to, is. now how do you say, now how would you say like your confidence, like the longer you've worked with them, does that help with your confidence as far as like who you speak to and who you meet and everything like yes, that? Yes, I that believe plays a big that confidence role? is, yeah, that plays a key in it. 
Um, just me continuously writing as well. I noticed that the more I write, the better I get. So yeah, that helps yeah. as well. So, That's dope. Like, if you saw my stuff from a year ago, you'd be like, what is that? <laughs> now when you read my stuff, it actually makes sense. That's so dope, man. Yeah. Um, what else are you into? Like, when you're not writing for, like, an artist, what are you doing? Like, what else are you, like? Um, I'm watching movies. I'm just relaxing. Um, catching up on some shows. I'll read a couple of music articles here and there as well. So that's what I like to do in my spare time. What shows are you watching? Um, right now I'm watching The Act. I really love Shameless. I need to catch up on that show. So you like, don't watch Game of Thrones? I don't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> Although I've heard someone said I look like one of the characters from that show at one of my old jobs. Um, yeah, I think she was short. I don't remember her name. I'm trying to see. She's a short character. I don't know her name. A short I character. I forgot her name. She's a female? She's a female. Mm-hmm. What's well, short females in Game of Thrones? I'm not uh, sure of their name. I don't think they watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> no. I wish I could remember her name, but I don't. It was so long ago. Shay? Like, you he, look like this girl. Was it Shay? Like, uh, that nah, name doesn't sound familiar. Nah, no, it's not Shay. Shay's very pale. Oh, no. Nah. I don't think that's what it is. It was. Yeah, you should watch Game of Thrones, though. Yeah, I heard it's, yeah. it's really good. Are you? Or do you have a weak stomach? Like, can you take like rated R stuff? Well, the only thing I don't like seeing is people getting stabbed and then blood. All right, out, never so. mind. <laughs> Cannot watch it. I don't it. like that. Like he, he can even say I cringe during those type of scenes. Hold I can't up. do it. Yeah, so there's a few. There's a, a lot of episodes can't. you can't. Watch. You might yeah, just don't watch it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. My mom walked in on me watching it. Once. Really? She's yeah. probably like, "What is going she on?" Said, "What in the world is this?" <laughs> I said, "It's Game of Thrones. This is a TV. This is the greatest TV show ever." And um, <clears throat> you know, my mother, she's a she's a Christian lady, so okay. She's like, "Why don't you watch something that's like about the Bible?" <laughs> I said, "Plot twist. I am, because." If you were to take the Bible mm -hmm. and you put it on a T and put it in TV format and entertainment format, this would be it. <laughs> Game of Thrones would be it. And she'd be like, no, that's not true. I'm like, yes, it is true. That's very that's true. That's a really good answer. But I'm not lying. It's, this is it, bro. Like, I'm not saying it follows the exact, like, timeline of yeah. the Bible. But as far as, like, the lessons that it mm -hmm. teaches you and... All the morals and the principles and the stuff that they value, honor and kingdoms and this is it. Game there of Thrones, that's it. That's all it is, bro. That's that's the show right there. And I'm sure there's other shows that follow some of that stuff too. Exactly. But yeah, game like I said, bro. Game of Thrones. Uh, I know people are sick of us fans <laughs> talking about it and everything, but if you don't watch it, you're you are missing out on mm -hmm. the greatest series. In history, yes, better than Grey's Anatomy, it's better oh, than House, oh. it's better than uh, Power. Okay, I haven't seen Power. So. Power, look, I've seen Power. Mm -hmm. Power's for kids compared to Game of Thrones, <laughs> and Power has some very uh, violent scenes. It has oh, some wow. very sexual, but Power's for kids at this point. Mm. My thing is, I can't watch a show unless it meets the standards exactly. of game it is hard How about empire now. i haven't heard anything about empire lately I, i've seen empire i think they're working on their next season but i don't watch it mm, My thing, like after I said, the first season i kind of just fell off i'm definitely not gonna watch it after what happened yes. a few months ago with what's the name with so. Jesse Small. that was for clout Definitely, that was for <laughs> that was for clout. You know, but was, he should have did it a different way. Yes, I think he should have done it a different way. Like, and that's that's the problem. Like, maybe the issue isn't getting clout. Mm -hmm. The issue is what you're getting clout for. Exactly. So okay, you want attention. You want you know people to notice you, but for what? Exactly. He had a right. Re he had a good reason, but it's just how he went about handling it. Mm -hmm. It's like you didn't have to do all that exactly you what well, you spent like seven thousand dollars i think so around to pay there, you could have used that 000. for a real purpose could have donated exactly no nope, raise awareness that, no? oh man god help us all <laughs> um so are you into sports or anything no sports no sports uh what like how, did you go to college or i did i actually uh recently graduated with my associate's degree Woo from where from Raritan Valley Community College. Raritan Valley. So That's there in Branchburg, New Jersey. So is that in your county? 
Yep, that's in okay. my county. Raritan a little Valley. farther. It's near Bridgewater. Holy I'd smokes. Say. Yeah. That's down south? No, no, no. It's up here. North. Bridgewater is like, the, let's say, hmm. from here, maybe 30, 40 minutes. 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. Man. Are you going to continue? like? Definitely, Bridgewater? definitely. Where are you going now? Um. So I'm still fumbling around with either going to Kane or Montclair. My dad really wants me to go to Kane because they have a really good, I mean, I'm clean, Montclair. Montclair. He really wants me to go to Montclair because, you know, they have a good communications, uh, you know, well, program. But I graduated from Kane. Okay. So um, my advice to you would be, because your goal is to get into, like, communications and everything. Mm-hmm. So I'd say, uh Honestly, it doesn't it, it doesn't depend it depends on the person. If mm-hmm. your dad tells you Montclair has the better communications department, I'd go I would go with his uh with that, but mm-hmm. again, it's you're the adult. You make the Definitely. final say. You get the final say. Um but for me, um Kane is not a bad school. It's very small, you know, um in a, environment, small community, so you can mm. you get to know people. So it's easy to make connections there. Definitely. So if you if you do the radio show over yes, there, yes. Um, I actually follow uh, Richard Scott. He's one of the hosts on their for Hip-Hop WK Weekly show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say just try to make connections wherever you go. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if it's Montclair or Kane. Either school could have a good con- communications program, but it's really up to you on what you do behind that Definitely. so if you do a radio show there try to get in connections with all the radio hosts and the professors who work in that department and the deans and see how they can help you and then of course you're doing your stuff outside of school too mm-hmm. so i think you already have a good advantage because prior to coming to the school you already have your little platform going already Definitely. so you just want to create your little benchmarks for when you graduate okay where do i want my platform to be how do i want this to be set up when i graduate um and and that's it like i think that's pretty good that's pretty good um would you study in like uh with your associates. Believe it or not, I did not go to school for journalism. And every time I tell people this, they're like, wait, what? You didn't go to school for journalism? I actually went for liberal arts because when I first started college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Just like me. And, you know, I just wanted to dip my toe in the pond and everything and anything. So um, when I do transfer, though, I do plan on uh, majoring in journalism. That's smart. I mean, Getting your associates in liberal arts is uh, not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And not getting it in journalism is not a bad thing either. It's like, it's only an associate's degree. I'm not saying it's only associate's, but it's like, (laughs) you're just starting out with your educational career. So it's not the end of the world. The fact of the matter is, you have experience in journalism even without the journalism degree from a two-year college. Mm -hmm. So it's not a big deal. Um, And then you already know you're going to, go ahead and get the journalism mm-hmm. degree uh four year degree so you know it all plays plays out pretty well you know so some people when they when they're surprised you really you really can't like fault them cuz they think yeah. oh you have to start off with this exact degree in order for you to keep going exactly it doesn't work that way um it's really about the experience it's mm-hmm. about what you're doing outside of the classroom more so than what you're doing in the classroom um and yeah i think you're on a good path seem like a very bright person um and again be mindful of your network i'm sure you know that definitely um the people you're around your friends and all that stuff Mm -hmm. um do you want to did you want to shout out like any of your social media accounts before we uh go um so you can follow me on um, instagram at at natalie underscore federal that's ee instead of ie and you can also follow the page if you're just curious or underground artists um at it's the fresh finds as well federal is gonna scare some people yep <laughs> uh, we the feds. but yeah uh, all right guys so thank you guys for tuning in to knobber talk make sure you guys follow us on instagram yes. and on twitter at the knobber talk podcast um tune in next time and thanks again we are out of here <laughs>